Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're making a video I've wanted to make for a long time. We're actually going to be talking through what is the difference between files, rasps, card files, uh, rifflers, all of these and seeing what are the differences, how do you use them, and uh, what do you need. Let's dive in. I've gone back and forth about making this video because there is a lot to cover. So I'm going to kind of speed through it, but I want to cover the whole gamut of all of the different types of files and rasps and rifflers and what makes all the differences here. Now I do have a lot of individual videos where I talk about a particular category and I'm probably going to be doing a live video sometime in the future where I can actually spend a lot more time and answer questions and go through it. But for some reason I've been getting a pile of questions recently on this topic so I want to dive into this. It's going to be a little longer than normal but I'm going to try and focus on the information and go through it as quickly as we can. So let's dive in with files. So what is a file? A file is a piece of steel that is hardened with teeth, but the teeth are all in lines. And in this one you can see how there's cross marks going this way, and then there's cross marks going this way. And so you have a double tooth pattern in this, as well as there are teeth on the side here. But the teeth go all the way across the plate, and that's what makes it a file. These are most commonly used for metalworking because they are hardened, so they can cut through a lot of metal. However, you can still use these for woodworking, and you generally, I think of these more as a finishing tool. They leave a smoother cut, and so we can use them to smooth out the roughness that we've had earlier from rasps, which I'll be talking about those in a minute. But this will give it a much cleaner surface, basically preparing it for the card scraper. They come in all different shapes and sizes from the standard mill file, which will have uh, hatching on both sides as well as both edges. You can get round, or if they taper off down to a smaller tip, it's generally called a rat's tail. This is a very large one. This would be a far more common rat's tail. You can get square. You can get triangular. Uh, you can get these in the half round, so it's flat on one side and round on the other. This is probably the one I use the most for woodworking because it allows me to do inside detailed curves as well as then outside curves and get a nice clean surface. So the half rounds are the ones I use all the time. And then on top of that, they do come in a lot of other shapes, which I'm going to talk about those a little bit, especially like the triangular ones. These are for saw sharpening. Next, we're going to move over here to rasps. Rasps, rather than having lines cut across them, have tiny little teeth. These teeth are far more aggressive and will bite into the work and, and rip it out. But there's two main types of rasp. Here we have the machine stitch. And you see how these are all in lines? And then they're in lines this way. So this is a very regular pattern. It was done by a machine. This one, on the other hand, was done by hand. This is a hand-stitched rasp. And you can see there is absolutely no pattern to these. They are all over the place and wild. And a hand-stitched rasp is actually a little smoother. Let me show you that. Machine stitch rasps are far cheaper and far more common, but the problem is because all those teeth are in a pattern, it's very easy to get these standard grooves, and they tend to catch a bit more. They take a little bit more force. They're not quite as smooth, but they are very aggressive and they get the work done. You're just going to be left with a little bit more rough surface with a machine stitched rasp. With a hand stitch rasp, they slide through the wood a lot easier. They flow through it without any problem at all, and they leave a much cleaner surface, even with similar sized teeth. This is just a, a much, much better rasp, but it's a much, much more expensive rasp. You can pick up decent machine stitch rasps for eh, 20, 30 bucks. They're, they're not that expensive. They're, they're decent. They get you going. And if you're money conscious, this is where you should go. You don't need to spend the money on a hand stitch rasp. However, if you have the money and you're looking for the next step up, these are a game changer and they are so much smoother. They're so much easier to work. A hand stitch rasp will do amazing things and it is a very big jump up. But rather than being 20, 30 bucks, you're going to be spending eh, 80, 100, maybe 150 in some cases, uh, depending upon the tooth size and how much time it actually took to do this, because these are labor intensive to make. Now, if you're asking what brand do I suggest or where do you find them, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later. Uh, but there are a bunch of links down below to the ones I recommend or the ones I use or the ones I'm showing off here. But we'll be talking about that at the end where I find most of mine. One of the fun ones that come up are these Japanese rasps. It's kind of like a hacksaw blade that has been bent into a wavy shape. 
And this is kind of interesting because it has a coarse side on one and a fine side on the other. So you can rip through things a bit quicker and rip through them a bit smoother. And some people really, really like these ones. You can use the coarse side to work it down a bit thicker. And one of the nice things about these, they do tend to leave a little bit smoother surface, but they're not quite as fast. And you can't use them on inside curves. But even with this, I can do this rough side, then flip it over to the smooth side and get a really clean cut. The one problem I find with these is a lot of times, if you're not careful, you tend to dig in the side and you'll get these grooves fairly easily where they follow along. So you just gotta be a little more careful with them, but a lot of people really, really like these ones. For my workflow, I generally prefer a hand stitch rasp and just using the flat side here. Plus then I have the other side that I can come in and do inside curves. I find these just to be a little bit faster and they're a little bit more happy for me. So let's say you're a little bit cash strapped. You want to get some of these, but you don't have the money to get all of them. Well, there's a solution for that. It's called a four in hand. A four in hand has a file on one side and rasp on the other. And then you flip it over and you have a half round shape, which has a file on one side and a rasp on the other. And this makes it very, very easy. If I'm doing my rough work on this side and I'm roughing down the board, then I can just spin it around and immediately go into smoothing. The same as if I am going to be doing the roughing on a flat surface or a, uh, an outside curve, then I can spin around and do the smoothing. This is actually one of the most useful file and rasp, probably the one I pick up more than anything else. The nice thing about these is you can pick them up at any hardware store or big box store. They're relatively cheap and you can pick up a, just a basic one to get going. It will treat you fine and it will get you into what you need to do for some of your organic shapes. This is a fantastic tool to get you going for almost nothing. But eventually you're going to want a slightly different profile. You want something that's a little more aggressive. You're going to want something that has some other things into it. And that's when you start collecting your rasps and files and you'll be getting other things. We'll talk about that a little later. So next step moving around, we have floats. And floats come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes, but most commonly you're going to find ones like these. Like files, they have cuts all the way across. But unlike files, these are actually softer. These are intended to be resharpened. So you can actually take a triangular file and recut these just like you would cut a saw. Floats are basically very, very wide saws. And most commonly they come in a rip tooth pattern like this because it goes straight across. But you can also get them in a cross cut pattern. And this is also still a float. It has the file going across it at an angle. These come in all different widths from down to an eighth inch all the way up to you know whatever size wide you want. These are commonly used in plane making and they do a fantastic job of smoothing out a surface inside something. So anywhere you would want to get a plane in there, you can get one of these in. You can do the exact same thing as a float with a file. A file just tends to be a little bit slower. Floats do a great job very, very quickly, especially when you need to get into the side of something. Having something that can clean that out really nicely does a phenomenal job. The other nice thing about these is once they get dull, you can resharpen them. With a file, once it gets dull, you throw it out. At this point, I have to say there are lots of videos out there of how to sharpen your files. They're not sharpening them, they're cleaning them. Or if you put them in an acid bath, you're not actually making the tooth sharper, you're just getting the junk out of there. You, you, you can't sharpen files because they're hardened unless you have an incredibly hard something to come in and cut them back out. The only way you can do that is anneal them, soften them, resharpen them, and then harden them back up. So once a file gets dull, it's generally trash. The next step up is this. This is a curved tooth file. Now it looks a lot like a float because it has these very large teeth that go all the way across, but they're curved. Also, this is hardened. So just like a file, this is hardened. So in general, these tend to be cheaper than your floats. Floats tend to be very expensive. They're specialty items. Whereas a curved tooth file will do basically the exact same thing as a float, but be much cheaper. So if you're trying to get into floats, I generally tell people go out and get a curved tooth file. You can't resharpen this once it gets dull, but it will last a good bit longer because it is hardened. So I have links to these down below and I use these quite often. And most of the time I'm probably going to grab one of these over a float because this curved tooth path pattern actually makes it a little bit smoother. You're hitting different points. With a straight tooth, you tend to get a, vib a vibration in as it goes across whereas this tends to feel a little bit better. And from this point on, you start to get into specialties. You'll come across these weird ones. 
that are a file on this side and a really, really heavy rasp on this side, and you'll see some cutting in edges on there. This is actually for shoeing horses. It allows you to then clean off the hoof and file it down before mating the horseshoe to it. Uh, don't generally use this, but I have it in stock so I can show it off. Uh, this one is actually for sharpening auger bits. Um, I have three or four of these and they're phenomenal. It has an aggressive tooth on the face and it's safe on the side. A safe file means that there is no cutting teeth on this side. So I can just make sure I'm doing this without doing the side here. And then on the other end, it is aggressive on the side and safe on the face. And then we can move up into my saw sharpening, which are all triangular files. Now I have entire videos on saw sharpening. I have a bunch of videos on that. But these are actually six-sided, so you have three main sides and then each edge is actually another small side. These are used for cutting in the teeth on saws. So if you want to see that, go look at the saw sharpening videos. And then if you really want to get into the weeds, we have rifflers. And rifflers are files or rasps, but they come in all different shapes, sizes, styles, and types. And I have around 300 of them here. These are very, very specialty. Do you need these? No. Out of the 300, I've probably only used maybe 20 of them, but I want to show you these because they're kind of fun. As you can see, you can get them in square, you can get them in triangular, you can get them in round, and they come in all different shapes and styles and types and aggressive tooth patterns and the list goes on and on. You can see this is only about half unrolled. Most woodworkers might have five, six, maybe a dozen of these. Uh, unfortunately, I found a great deal from a friend in Italy who had a pile of these and he sent me out this whole ton. It cost an arm and a leg, but at that point, it was still a fantastic deal. And you may be seeing one end on all of these. All of these are double-ended, and usually there's an aggressive end on one end and a fine end on the other. So it's the same profile, just a different grit. And yes, these are a lot of fun. Do you need them? No. But if you're gonna be doing a lot of carving, these are phenomenal. Rifflers are great for coming in and getting into that shape and just doing small, detailed spots. So if you're doing carving, these can let you clean it up and do the final finishing detail. So this side is the rough, this side is the smoother side, and I can come back in and do the exact same thing and clean it out. And then I've got another set of these that get even smoother. And so with these, I can get into these tiny little spots that I probably can't get into anything else and clean out odd shapes. So for carving, these are phenomenal. But for most anything else, you, you basically don't need them. One last thing before we move on. This is something you're probably going to want to get. This is a file card. And this is basically a wire brush with short bristles. And what this will do is get in here and very, very quickly clean out your files and rasps. If you're working in woods that will gum these up, or you're working in aluminum or something of that nature, these will get loaded really quickly. But with a file card, you can also clean them out very quickly and you'll get a much more aggressive cut on this. So this is a great thing to have on hand. I'll try and leave a link to it down below. So what brand should you get or where should you go and get these? Now I'll leave a link to most of these down below, but in general, when you're getting files, it doesn't matter. Now, some people out there are gonna be very specific of, oh, this brand is phenomenal and oh, this old steel is great. And when you're first getting started, that really is just trash, don't listen to that. Files are files are files. Um, you will go and get the cheap one and you will be very, very happy. And then eventually, once you really get into it and you want to dump some money in, by that time you'll know which one you want and you're getting into very personal questions. So generally, I'm telling people, when you're looking for files, go to the big box store, buy some files. Most of mine are antiques that I've gotten from estate sales where there's a box of files and you know it's 20 bucks for 50 files and I'll bring them home and I'll throw out most of them and keep three or four out of the box. Um, I've probably purchased seven or eight box lots like that. And that's where most of my files come from. When it gets into rasps, you generally want something a little better. These plastic handled cheap ones, they are, are just, they are a pain to use. They're, they're not very good. Um, this one is an antique Nicholson that I have and I really like it. It's machine stitched, uh, but it still works very, very well. And so uh, generally I'm gonna say, try and find decent, wooden handle uh, machine stitch to get going. 
And then once you want to get into it, you can get into the hand stitched. And these ones are from Narex. They're probably the most affordable uh, that I've found of machine stitch. There are a couple companies I've come across that have a machine stitch that is supposed to be a hand stitch. I've never actually tried them, but it'd be kind of fun to play with. The four in hand, you're probably going to want to just go get a cheap one. Um, there, there isn't any massive special thing about this. The one I have down below is just a, a cheap one you can get, and they work relatively well. This will get you going and get you into doing the shapes that you want. Once you get into floats, you're starting to work in specialty things. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's actually from Lee Nielsen. It's one of my few Lee Nielsen tools. Um, and I absolutely love this, but you're going to spend an arm and leg. Floats are very specialty tools. They are harder to come by. Uh, so generally, I'm going to say skip these until you really want to get into plane making. Until that time, you can get a curved tooth file. Uh, I love these things for general plane making and float work. These are phenomenal, and for the price, you just can't beat them. I'll have a link to these down below. They're the, the Narex ones as well. For saw sharpening, I really love this kit that comes from Veritas. Uh, it's a very simple thing, and it's got the whole set in here. You don't need the whole set. You just need the two or three that you need for your saws, but eventually you're going to want to buy the whole set. For saw sharpening files, you're going to burn through these fairly quickly. I generally tell people start off by going to the big box store and getting a cheap triangular file that's the right size for you. It'll work you well. It'll probably sharpen six, seven saws-ish, uh, and then it'll get dull. These good ones might last me 15 to 20 saws before I need a new one. So it just depends on the type of saw, the size of tooth, and a lot of other variables. But you're going to burn through them, so don't worry about getting amazingly good quality. The amount of saws you can get through per price, you're probably better off getting the cheaper ones. But these nicer ones do feel a little bit smoother and they don't vibrate quite as much. So it might be worth the, the expenditure for that. When it comes to rifflers, <laughs> if, if you're looking for rifflers, you're looking for something specialty. Uh, you're going to be looking in a lot of your carving suppliers. And uh, uh, these are the things that if you're a general cabinet maker, you don't need these. They're really nice when you do get into carving, but they're not a necessity. And you don't need 300 of them. I just happened to get an incredible once in a lifetime deal on them, and that's why I have 300 of them and have only used 20 or so out of the whole batch. So this was a really fast run through of a very large topic, and I'm sorry for just blurring through this. I know there are lots of other questions. Let me know those in the comments down below. I'll get to as many of them as I possibly can. Uh, yeah, I, I'll probably be doing a live video in the not too distant future where I'll spend a little more time actually talking through all these, but uh, we'll see about that. Um, this, this is one of these topics where I could do an entire series of videos over a month and still not cover all of the, the details that I'd want to get into. There's a lot once you start getting into RASP and files. So my, my general suggestion for the beginner is get a four in hand, get into it, see what it does, experiment with it and then buy them as you need them. Don't buy everything. Just be like, oh yeah, I've got this profile coming up. Let's get that profile. Oh, I would like one that's a little more aggressive here. Let's get a rasp for this. I'd like one that's a little more smoother. Let's get a, uh, let's get a, a file for that that has the profile I'm looking for. And buy them as you need them. Or go to estate sales and antique places and you'll find boxes of old files. A lot of them are trash, but a lot of them are good. So that might be a great place to get started. As always, I want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel, everyone who's literally making this channel happen. Without you, we would not be here. So thank you for that. Um, so everyone who's clicked the join button, everyone who's scrolling over here on the side from Patreon, from the bottom of my heart, from Sarah and me, thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to keeping this going for a long time to come. So if you'd like to help out with that and support the channel and keep us going, you can find links to Patreon down below, or you can click that join button down below and become a member here on YouTube. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Well, I'm glad that video's done. I can finally file that away. I hate talking about files and rasps. It is a really coarse subject. This is one of those videos you start up and then you just float right on through it.